So joining me now to assess the issues is Chris Roebuck, a professor at Cass Business School. Thank you so much for coming in to speak to us. Uh, let's be clear about this. Will any amount of public shaming criticism ultimately prevent Bob Diamond and indeed his counterparts at other banks making chunky bonus payments over the next few weeks? In reality, <laughs> probably not. However, increasingly the banks are having to take into account political calculations and other calculations which they weren't before, particularly the British banks. Obviously life is significantly easier for the roughly 20 overseas banks who are in London, but for the British banks, you know, the heat is on, but it's going in their direction at the moment. You were telling me there are three irreconcilable positions. Yeah, on this and, issue. and, Tell and me more that's, about that. that's the key problem. And I think uh, the three positions don't really understand each other that much. The banks are coming at this from a commercial perspective. Mm -hmm. We need to pay market rate to be able to produce the bottom line our shareholders want, either here or overseas. The politicians are coming at it from the perspective of if we're in government, we need to keep tax revenues coming in. If we're out of government, we can bash the bankers with impunity. And the public's coming at it from the perspective of why should one individual earn as much in one year as a nurse does or a soldier fighting in Afghanistan does in their entire lifetime? And if you think about those positions, the problem is they're pretty irreconcilable. Now, it's fair to say that even some in the banking industry are saying in relation to bonuses for what could be described as average performers, it's actually pretty easy for those average performers to get a bonus. And some people are suggesting that for those performers, we need to benchmark back down. So with that in mind, do you think that this issue will be addressed? In some way, it's probably going to have to be addressed because I think the senior leadership of the banks globally are beginning to say to themselves, well, actually, this may be an opportunity to do this benchmarking back down that we've been thinking about for a number of years. And that will actually make us look good in terms of the public. The problem is that no bank and no country can do this individually. This has to be done by a global agreement because otherwise that bank or country are totally exposed. It's, it's like in London, the government pressurizing the British mm. banks to stay well below market rate. It's not going to work because it means that anybody at a British bank just has to walk across the road to an overseas bank and he's going to get more money. And that issue very much goes to the heart of this subject, doesn't it, Chris? What are the obstacles to global coordination? Not on the cards anytime soon? Oh, no, uh, <laughs> because everyone, again, has their own interests. That's the problem. And the US and Singapore and Switzerland and all the others, uh, from their perspective, if they can pull business away from London, good luck to them. Chris Roebuck, professor from Cass Business School, thanks so much for Thank coming you. in. Great to get your analysis. Well